Episode 1 Introduction Variety of Scenarios What is the HCI? Nowadays, hyperconvergence is the most common way of building a data center infrastructure. All the leading vendors use this approach to present their solutions to the market. However, is it the best way of deploying data center infrastructures? First, let's see where it all began and how hyperconvergence resulted in becoming the new normal. Scenario 1 Traditional It all began with trial and error of the traditional deployment, where the infrastructure consisted of servers, compute, networking, and storage from different manufacturers. The same went for their compliance with industry standards and compatibility with other solutions, which were constantly changing. A huge amount of blood, sweat, and tears was spent by admins on testing the compatibility between all the components with a future goal of achieving optimum performance and reliability of their existing and future infrastructure. Scenario 2. Converged. After the design was validated by the vendor or a couple of vendors, converged systems really made life easier. There was no need for any guesswork. Its compatibility was granted by the solution vendor. The majority of the vendors offered pre-built solutions before shipping them to customers. Also, converged systems came with branded advanced management tools to simplify operations and automate procedures. It made the rollout of new applications much faster, but made the management of multiple solutions more complex. Nonetheless, such collaboration of multiple vendors led to the development of remote services and made the support of a standard vendor solution a proactive event. Scenario 3. Hyperconverged. Hyperconvergence took it a step further. Hyperconverged systems combined compute, networking, and storage components into a single box. The virtualization of these components and the replication of data is followed by the implementation of VM failover mechanisms. At such a level, even the least resilient production has a fault tolerance equal to at least the failure of two components. Better yet, the improvement of hyperconverged systems was also in part due to the scalability options of the solution. Simply adding more components was not always an option in the past, so there were numerous cases where the purchase of an additional host was the only way out. The spec for a successful solution was the result of equally combining the resources of all the components between multiple hosts. This combination led to the affordability of hyper-converged solutions at a cost much lower than that of converged ones. Let's start with the most frequent question. Is hyperconvergence the best way for building a data center infrastructure? The information may seem like a lot at the moment, so let's consider the advantages and disadvantages of hyperconverged infrastructures. Hyperconverged advantages. First, the advantages. Focus on the workload. For too long, infrastructure policy and management have focused on the wrong constructs. Managing LUNs, hosts, and clusters is old school. Today, the workload should be focus. In the hyperconverged model, the application is the focus and additional resources are always a call away. Elasticity. Hyperconvergence focuses heavily on scaling easily. If you need more resources, you add additional box or boxes on the fly and that's it. Data efficiency. The nature of hyperconverged infrastructures lends itself well to a high degree of data reduction by way of deduplication and compression, which leads to more approach-able requirements for storage capacity, network bandwidth, and IOPS requirements. System localization and resources consumption. As a result of combining compute, storage, and networking components inside a single construct, the hyperconverged solution has a smaller hardware footprint, it's more easy to maintain, it has lower electricity consumption, and provides for more scalability in terms of one unit per rack. Also, from the support standpoint, you're contacting one company. Cost savings. You can start with a small setup and grow as large as you need to. Hyperconverged disadvantages. So far, so good, but let's check out the disadvantages. Self resource consumption. 
Because of combining compute, storage, and networking components together, hyper-converged solutions become the victims of their own architecture. Networking becomes the weakest point. In order to provide all the features, the solution may require half of the network ports for the job. Here, each vendor comes with their own appetite. Sometimes, the network traffics could be put on the same network or a combination of networks, but it affects both traffics because they're sharing the same network. Vendor Lock-In Because everything is provided by the same vendor, you're tied to the vendor's roadmap and partnerships. Feature requests proceed on the vendor's timetable, while third-party support for automation, monitoring, orchestration, and other ecosystem functionality usually depends on a third party choosing to support the HCI vendor's APIs. Vendor lock-in, API support, and related issues are not unique to HCI. They exist in traditional IT and have done so for as long as IT has been around. What is different about HCI is that if a traditional IT vendor fumbled their ecosystem management duties, then only one part of an organization's IT was impacted. Scaling granularity limitations. Hyper-converged infrastructures scale by simply adding more nodes to the environment. While this allows for easily scaling the solution, it also leads to a certain drawback. What if you simply need more storage in the environment? To get the added storage in an HCI environment, you have to add a node that contains not only the needed extra storage, but it should also contain additional compute, memory, and network resources, and you may not need these additional resources. The same is true with compute memory. To get the added compute, you'll be adding additional storage to the environment with an additional node. HCI solutions do not lend themselves to granularly scaling the capacity of specific resources. Cost As already seen, many of the advantages of HCI can also be its disadvantages. Due to the lack of granular scaling of resources with HCI, any realized cost savings may be offset by the expenditure that may come about by the inability to scale those resources individually. Organizations will need to consider their resources and capacity needs and determine if the proposed HCI solution scales in a linear way with those requirements. Summary or final word. Having considered all the aforementioned information, we arrive at the following conclusion. Today's hyper-converged infrastructure solutions are quite powerful and provide a great way for organizations to easily provision and scale their IT infrastructure. The simplicity of managing HCI solutions through a single pane of glass translates into lowered costs in terms of management and support by engineers managing the solution. While HCI provides the demanded stability for your platform in today's virtualized environments, there are certainly benefits along with potential drawbacks to it. The process of sizing your needs was not as important before as it is now. Each customer needs to evaluate their particular business needs and use cases to determine if the benefits outweigh the drawbacks, especially when there isn't one standard to follow. HCI solutions are getting better with every year, and new prospects are being introduced by various platforms that are taking advantage of the newest capabilities provided by today's hypervisor solutions and the hardware they are deployed on. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Tune in next time to learn about storage levels and how to access them. Storage protocols.